Resident Evil as a series has undergone many different writing shifts. We've had absolutely beautiful moments, absolutely crazy moments, really dramatic ones, the cinematography has been all over the place and we've basically been from heaven to hell and back again. We've seen everything possible in this franchise, even railguns have been introduced as of the Vendetta movie. And god, do I need to get into the Joe Baker DLC fists. And so, we have had quite a variety of different characters due to this in all of the franchise, and I'm talking about the movies, and that includes the live action, as well as the CGI animated ones, I'm talking about the mangas, the games, even books and things like that. And so, when we talk about all of these characters, we're gonna have some quite annoying ones of course, some that aren't up to par, or maybe they were just written so badly intentionally to make other characters look good. But I'm gonna get into some of the most annoying Resident Evil characters in my opinion, and we'll see if you guys agree with that. But either way, this is gonna be one hell of an annoying video, and none of these people are in any particular order, I just want people to know that. I'm just gonna throw them out using an RNG roll calculator for the video and we'll get into it. So get your popcorn, your soda, your chair, and your grandma as always. So you must be Irving. Wow, perceptive, aren't ya? You think this is a joke? You're just like all the other pieces of scum terrorists. Oh, I'm not like them. I'm a businessman with standards. Drop the weapon. Or, how about you drop yours? Alright, I absolutely hate this guy. Like, I really hate him. Like, why? They could have written Resident Evil 5, and this character does not even need to be in there. They just decided they needed some really trolley character so that, I guess, Wesker didn't look like such a douchebag after all. But let me actually go through with specifically what pisses me off about this character, especially in this scene. I mean, when we start out, he's like all panicky and like that's like a normal reaction, but then he just starts being sarcastic while there's two people pointing guns at him. Like, these people could just shoot him at any point. So you must be Irving. Wow, perceptive, aren't ya? You and he's literally like, oh, I'm in a 2v1 situation, but why don't you put your guns down, even though you guys are like trained professionals and have literally taken down entire organizations and Chris Redfield, Jesus Christ, his accolades. And I'm just some random businessman that, look, can't even actually aim my gun properly or hold it in a proper stance. Like, why is he making demands? And just that, that introduction just... Oh, I hate this character. I hate him. Wow, perceptive, aren't ya? And it only gets worse later in the game, especially after he infects himself. I mean, even when he's dying, he is fucking annoying to death. Chris, see your Chris. <laughs> What's so funny? How do you know about me? All your answers are way to head, Chris. In that cave. If he can survive long enough to get them. Italian's not so bad, but it's not gonna change anything. You're still screwed! We're the time here. Motherfucking Simmons. Now this guy isn't annoying for edgy reasons. This guy is annoying because of the amount of destruction, chaos, mayhem, and other things that he has caused throughout his life, all for some pathetic goals and towards the end of it he just became completely infatuated and had the hugest boner for Ada even Leon couldn't compete with that and it basically took over his mind I mean this guy is just he, he honestly just blows my mind at how like he is the one that is responsible for how Raccoon City was destroyed with all the missiles now of course we don't know which ending of Raccoon City was canon, but whichever one it was, 
he is the one responsible for said order, among a multitude of other things. This guy is a giant dick and he really does not know how to conflict resolve things, he doesn't know how to come to practical solutions, and well, he kinda deserves everything that happened to him to be honest, as well as especially the rejection from Ada. Honestly, this guy's hypocrisy is too big. He would rather choose personal profit for his little organization, as well as the United States of America's reputation, rather than for the truth to be told to the world and the history books to be accurate, which also means, well, we can't learn from history if we don't know about it. So fuck Simmons, especially. This guy was gonna rewrite history and the Resident Evil universe. I'm pretty sure we all remember Lucas Baker from Resident Evil 7. He had quite a unique personality, and this is even pre infection. We all know how the mold fungi basically turns you batshit insane, but it seems like Lucas actually gained some sanity from the fungi if anything and became less insane because the activities he did were pretty much more creative and less hostile. He was trying to set up some fun birthday games and give birthday parties out for example. It might have not ended well, but it's an improvement from stealing his sister's underwear and also killing animals, so you know, there is that. Honestly though, the most annoying part about Lucas, and it's not the character itself, it's the dialogue, the way he constantly taunts you, which is degrading and always provocative, and then all of the traps that he tries to make you rush through with said provocations. He's actually really good when it comes to psychologically taunting you as a player, and also Ethan and Chris themselves, but his sadistic nature is one of the highest I've seen in the entire franchise, and that's what makes him one of the worst characters. It's not that he wants some kind of power or influence or geopolitical resolution. I mean, you can say a lot of other characters, including Wesker, actually have, even in their own head, some kind of delusional noble goal. But Lucas just wants to cut things up, see people react in pain, you know, fuck with people's minds. He's basically the most villainous villain in all of Resident Evil. He doesn't even care about it for profit. It's just for sheer psychological, sadistic pleasure. And that is what makes him one of the worst and most horrific characters. I guess this list needed to be a little bit less vague because worst doesn't mean worst developed, it can be the worst types in terms of what we had to experience to just cringy characters overall, which we'll get into next. But I just want you to remember that every single word that Lucas delivered, every single action he did, that was his own independent choice and he was completely unaffected by any external factors. So everything you saw about Lucas was Lucas. <laughs> oh, she thinks this thing is special. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, Ethan. That ain't special. This, this right here is special. You see, Ethan, Everybody wants to turn back the- Well, that last scene was pretty horrendous, and I hope you can understand what I mean by one of the worst RE characters. I really wish we never would have had to see that scene, but then again, I wish we didn't have to see these next scenes, and Shiva Alamore is gonna be one of the most annoying Resident Evil characters. Now personally, I don't actually have anything wrong with Shiva. Actually, I think she's a pretty great character, and if anybody didn't know, after Resident Evil 5 by the way, fun tip, she got promoted to the leader and director of the African branch of the BSAA. So you know, she got a hefty promotion, her pay rise probably went up majorly, you know, I'm assuming they get paid, probably gets five extra dollars an hour, and you know, instead of going into danger zones with just a pistol and like three bullets, she's probably been upgraded to like, you know, an SMG and ten bullets, so that's a fantastic upgrade. But in reality, the problems with Shiva do not stem from her personality, her actions, her background, 
we all know what it stems from, and it's that fucking terrible AI that Capcom coded. I mean, even they must be ashamed of themselves. Whoever the developers were that coded the goddamn AI for Resident Evil 5, especially after Resident Evil 4 actually had some pretty good niche AI. I know everyone hates it, but there were some good niches in there, like how Ashley would duck when you shot at her, and that would allow you to kill the enemies behind her. Well, look at Shiva in comparison. Let's just look at how fucking amazing this character is in its AI. Yep, she will literally open up doors and run into instant kill enemies in melee range while she has a gun and nothing else. Like, that. that is just... That's some next level hard-coded AI right there. Like, you guys at Capcom Dev, R&D Team 1 were like, Hey guys, we need to code Shiva's AI in this fight, you know? One-hit kill enemy, you know, there's doors that it's gotta go through. Let's make Shiva open it for them, and then just right run straight into it. Like, you gotta kill the boss before that happens, or else you lose. And then, let's throw multiple of these guys into that area at once. Oh, I'm sure so many people have PTSD with that AI. But if that wasn't bad enough, just watch this clip, and it's even worse. These moments happen like every three seconds in that game. They're not isolated incidents. Anyone that's played Resident Evil 5 knows this. We'll never win like this. Time to change tactics. We can hide. No, I'm not fucking okay. Screw you, Shiva. Raymond. That's you, isn't it? <laughs> the BSAA. A little too late. What is the FBC doing here? <laughs> answer me, Raymond. I don't have to answer anything. You have no authority over this. There's no time to fight. We've got to- Give it a rest. I don't even know why you're here or who you're fighting. Raymond! Alright, we're trying to fight a bioterrorism organization. You know, we're trying to stop the end of the world. What in the hell is with this anime sarcastic character? With ginger hair, by the way, not some cowboy B-pop spike-looking motherfucker, but some ginger hair guy that looks like he's really, really having a bad day. Why is he also acting like he's from some edgy boy band from, like, the USA who's 14 years old? Like, we're trying to save the world. What is, what is even going on? Like, his response to Jill was just like, Girl, I don't have time for this. It's like, what? And then you have his face. His face. I can't. I can't get over how they did, like, ugh, just look at this, look at this travesty, I, I, I don't have words for this, usually I'm full of very articulate, elaborate and descriptive words, I got nothing, I got nothing guys, just look at this, just look at it, this guy, just this guy, fuck this guy. Just, just fuck Raymond. God, this guy is so cringy and bad, I actually have to watch that scene one more time just to highlight how dis- just, just look at it and just- Highlight how dismissive he is and how much he acts like he's in a boy band. Just please. He's supposed to be a special agent to save the world. Just look at this. Raymond. That's you, isn't it? <laughs> the BSAA. A little too late. What is the FBC doing here? <laughs> Answer me, Raymond. I don't have to answer anything. It's... You have no authority over this. There's no time to fight. We've got to- Give it a rest. I 
don't even know why you're here or who you're fighting. Raymond, stop right there! Nothing will change unless you get your hands dirty. Now, you might be wondering who my most hated character is, and I'm just gonna leave it to the video itself, which, you know, it should highlight pretty well why I hate this character. A lot of people agree with me on this point. I, uh, he's very edgy, very boisterous, completely fucks every situation up, isn't helpful other than like maybe one situation. There's one game that gives him a redeeming factor in somewhat and that's it, but other than that he's just an annoying little teenager shit that really should have used one of the weapons to blow his own skull out so that the rest of the universe could have actually progressed much better. The fact that this guy even managed to become anything other than just a random cannon fodder, well I guess he did at the end, but anything other than random cannon fodder is so surprising to me considering his complete lack of awareness of like literally anything. I don't even think he knows the world exists. So without teasing you any further, let's get into who it is. Don't you! Who are you? Huh? You're not a zombie. Well, great. Wait right there. I'm coming over. Uh, sorry about that little misunderstanding, but I thought you were another one of those monsters. Shut up. I said I was sorry. My name's Steve. Shut up. I was a prisoner on this island. Shut up. And I'm guessing you're not from Umbrella either. No. Shut up. Hmm. Nice. I'll remember that. Hey, I heard there's an airport around here. And once I find it, I can finally escape from this crazy island. I'll see ya. Hey, shut up. I don't want you following me, lady. You'll only slow me down. Hurry up! Go, go, go! Okay, let's go! Come on, let's go! What, are you scared? I swear I'll protect you next time, Claire. I feel like Steve Burnside is basically just discount Leon Kennedy with like a 31 year old's accent that's trying to sound 14 years old but also the character is supposed to be older than that so it doesn't really, it, it just all creates a big mixed garbled mess. And then on top of that he just has the edgiest attitude ever. Like. Did you even see how he tried to dual wield those Uzis? Like, he loves his dual wielding. He thinks he's a little edge lord. Anyway, I made a tweet about this lately about who's the most hated RE characters, and it kind of got my creative juices going. And I just thought about it, and I wanted to make a video on it because I thought this would be pretty funny and interesting. We always talk about the good RE characters, all the amazing things that they do, the achievements, etc. But we don't talk about the edge lords, the sadists, etc. And it makes for a little bit of a fun difference. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave a like, a share, a subscribe. Get your grandma to donate $8 billion to my Patreon. I just hope you're having a beautiful day. As always, take it easy and peace.